We already talked about the goats. All right, so first and foremost, uh, we're going we're gonna to get into the new tagging system in Ubix. And I'll explain exactly what that is, but it's going to tie directly into your upfront needs analysis. So if we look at the sales process as the, what we call the critical path to sales, no, step number one is meet and greet. Step number two is needs analysis. Uh, so we're going to make the assumption that a lot of your leads are coming in through the system, through your websites potentially, and then you're going to be emailing them back in order to uh, set up a time to do a phone conversation. You can also use this system uh, when you're doing, if you're, say, working on a model home and you get a prospect that walks in that has not got into the system yet. I'm going to show you both ways. One, to do it from modifying a lead that's already in the system, and one from just doing a simple prospect entry. But we're going to start with going through the uh, initial, uh, the initial uh, uh, console, or I should say, initial lead intake. Uh, which all of you should have access to this. The form looks uh, just like so. And there's one for remodeling and there is one for new homes. So quick raise your hand or type a question. Does anybody not have access to what we're looking at right here? I'll scroll down a little bit and so you can see what the second part of this looks like. Does anybody not have access to this? Just raise your hand or or um, uh, type something into the question box. Okay, Jed, uh, so you're going to be my buyer, and I'm going to be the salesperson, and we're going to walk through this. And I'd like everyone that's listening to pay careful attention to the answers that Jed is giving here, because we're going we're gonna to go right from here into the system and look at uh, how the tagging works. So, uh, Jed, uh, I'll leave this up to you. Do you want to be a somebody that is not in this system yet, uh, that, say, walked into a model home, or do you want to be somebody that, say, is in the system from filling out a survey, they're just a lead, and this is the first time that we've, we've talked? How do you want to handle it? Um, I, I'd like to do the, someone that's in the system that's been a lead, um, just so everybody can see how to handle someone that's already been to the website and registered. Okay. That's okay. Whatever you, I mean, whatever you prefer. But that, that sounds great. Yeah, that sounds great. I, I, think, uh, I think that would be wonderful. All right, let's go ahead and, and, and walk through this. Hi, I'm, uh, I'm Rick from uh, uh, Nielsen Homes. Uh, how are you doing today? Great. I'm Jed. How are you? Hey, great, Jed. Great, Jed. Pleasure, uh, pleasure to meet you. Beautiful day today, isn't it? Uh, yeah, it actually is. <laughs> Good. I have no <laughs> idea what the weather is in Utah, but it's always sunny in Utah anyway, right? Uh, so, Jed, I understand your – what's one of your neighborhoods, Jed, that you work? Um, I, I work in Evanston. Evanston? Twin Ridges. Twin Ridges? Okay. So I'm going to make the assumption here, since you're in the system, you filled out a survey, say design library, whatever. I went back to your customer one-on-one. -on -one. I looked through what your activity was online, and I saw that you spent a fair amount of time on uh, Evanston. And so that's what I used to follow up via email for Twin Ridges. And you told me, yes, you're looking for, let's say, home site or available home information in, uh, in Evanston. Okay? Okay. So, Jed, it sounds like you have to get some more information about our um, uh, Evison project, uh, Twin Ridge. Is that right? Yes, definitely. Okay. Well, great. Well, uh, I'll be happy to uh, get you that information uh, that you're looking for. Um, do you have about 10 minutes just to talk a little bit about the things that you're looking for so then I can uh, better direct you? Yeah, that'd be great. Okay. Well, in the amount of time that we talk, what I'd like to do is just learn as much as I can about what you're looking for. And uh, once I understand that, I will tell you what we have or don't have available in Evanston, and then we'll talk about the, uh, the next step. Does that sound okay? Yeah, that sounds great. Okay. So, Jed, um, how do you spell your, your last name? Let's see, is it, is it Nilsson, N-I-L-S-O-N? Is that right? That's right, actually. Okay. Great. In the case we get cut off today, uh, what is the best phone for me to uh, to get back to you at? 801-392-8100. Okay. Now, Jed's a lead, right, in the system. I don't have a cell phone. So I just got his phone now. So now, you know, I'm on the, I'm on the process of converting him from a lead to a, a prospect. 
And I'm just curious, Jed, how did you find out about us? Uh, Google. Oh, okay. So through the internet. Yeah, I searched uh, new homes in Evanston, Wyoming, and we're it. Okay, fantastic. And I see you've been on our on, on our website. Um, and uh, were you uh, able to find the information you were looking for on our website? Um, I, I found quite a bit of information. I just don't know what's available specifically in this community. Perfect. Okay, and that's I'll make sure I get that uh, to you. Uh, Jed, first of all, um, what type of home um, are you considering? I would like something around uh, 250 or below. Okay. And I prefer that it's a Rambler and, and I have to have a three-car garage and as much land as possible. Okay, a large home site's important. Yes, I definitely prefer it. Okay. And uh, besides our Twin Ridge project in Evanston, what other locations are you considering? Um, you know, I, I would live anywhere in the city, just depending on the price and, and how large the lot is. So you definitely want to be in Evanston, does that sound, does that sound right? Yes, definitely. Okay. I'm assuming Evanston's the city? Yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. Great. Um, and is Evanston, Jed? Do you have like lookouts, walkouts, flat, or is it all flats? Or what type of home sites do you have in Twin Ridge? Um, there isn't a flat spot in Evanston, unfortunately. <laughs> so is it all walkouts? Walkout basements? It's either, it's either walkout or the opposite. Okay. Okay, and a jet is a is a walkout home site. Uh, would that be desirable for you as well? Um, I yeah, if I, if I had a preference, that'd be great. Okay, fantastic. Okay, and Jed, I'm just curious. Uh, as far as uh, where where do you live right now? Georgia. You're in Georgia. Okay. And what's bringing you to Evanston? Uh, job. Okay. I'm a... Have you have you accepted <laughs> <laughs> Have you accepted the position I'm yet or are you still uh, are you still considering? What's that? Have you accepted the position in Evans in Evanston yet or are you still considering it? Yes, I have. You have accepted it. Okay. And have you built a home before? No. You haven't. Okay. I know nothing about new construction. You'd, all right. Okay. I'll make take that into consideration. And are there other builders that you're considering in uh, in Evanston? Yes. Okay. And uh, who would that be that you're also talking to? Castle Creek Homes. <laughs> They're not really there, but I'm just trying to think. Of them. I, okay. I don't know their name. Castle Creek Homes. Okay. That's that's great. And are you also considering uh, buying a used home? Yes. Okay. And ideally... Sale or foreclosure, that would be great. Okay. And do you have a realtor, uh, Jed, that you're working with on that? You know, I've had a realtor show me the used homes, um, but I'm not sure if they're going to work with me on the new homes. I don't know how that works. Okay. Well, I'll be happy to talk to you about that uh, a little bit later. Um, and ideally, Jed, when would you like to be able to move into your new home? As quickly as possible. Okay. So fast as possible. Okay, and I noticed you mentioned that you'd like to be at 250 or under. Uh, will you be paying cash or financing? Financing. Okay. I don't know how that works either. Okay. Well, we could talk about that. Have you have you had the opportunity to be to be pre qualified uh, with a lender yet? Um, I talked to my credit union and have somebody working on it, but I haven't heard yet what I qualify for. Okay, so the 250 is kind of based on maybe like an online mortgage calculator, just where your payments would be, that sort of thing? Um, it's more based on just my, what I came up with based on what I've seen online, that that's, anything over 250 might be hard to resell. Oh, okay. Okay, I understand that. 
Well, Jed, in uh, in Evanston Twin Ridges, our ranches or rambler plans range from uh, say about 200 uh, for a home package to start, and we've seen people go all the way up to uh, 350. So definitely, we can hit that that 250 price point. Is that accurate, Jed? Yeah. Okay. So we can definitely uh, hit that. Now, your home in Georgia, uh, do you currently own or rent it? I own it. Okay, and will you be selling that home before you begin building your new home? I hope so. I, you know, the market's not great, um, but, uh, but I'd like to sell it. Okay, and is it currently listed for sale? I need to decide if I'm going to do for sale by owner or get a realtor. Okay. I'm not sure how that works either. Okay. <laughs> well, we can certainly talk about maybe helping you find a realtor in Georgia. As well. And you're talking Georgia, the state, right? There's no town of Georgia close by here? Right. That, okay. 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 And, Jed, how many people are going to be enjoying your new home? Sorry, what's that? How many people will be enjoying your new home? This could all be this could all be make believe, Jed. <laughs> I've been making. Uh, there'd be uh, five people. Five of you, okay. Okay, and you four mentioned wives. <laughs> four wives and one child. Oh, okay. Yeah, well, <laughs> things are a little bit different in Georgia. I understand. All right. Uh, and uh, you mentioned that you have been talking with a realtor, but you're not sure if you're going to use them uh, with your uh, new home. Do you know? Do you have a buyer's representation agreement with your current realtor here in uh, uh, in uh, Utah or Wyoming? I, I haven't signed anything. They've tried to get me to sign things, but I, I just haven't signed it. Yet. Okay, so you have no buyer rep agreement. Okay. And how long have you been looking at uh, new homes around the Evanston area? Um, I've been searching online for about three months. Okay. And Jed, uh, are you are you still living in Georgia, or have you moved into a temporary residence uh, uh, around Evanston? I'm living in Georgia, and I'm just having a hard time. Uh, I'm having a hard time finding a used home that I like. Um, but I'm also having a hard time figuring out what to rent because I don't know how long it would take me to build. Okay. So if I were to mail you some information, would I mail it to an address here locally or to Georgia? To Georgia. Okay. And so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to get your, your information. And I would say, Jed, I've got some things that I'll email you as well. What is the best email address for me to send those to? Um, JedNelson at gmail.com. Okay, great. And Jed, are you going to be the primary contact for finding uh, your new home, or is there somebody else that's also working with you that will be the primary contact? Um, I'm sure my girlfriend will make the decision. I have no choice in it. Okay. I'll and, it and what's her name? Sally. Sally. Okay. I, I thought Bertha. <laughs> yeah. Bertha Jones. Uh, okay. And uh, what is her preferred communication method? Does she like uh, text, phone, or, or email better? Text and email. Okay. And uh, is there a good time of the day for, for her to uh, receive texts or emails as far as me sending information? Uh, pretty much any time. She's always on the phone. Great. Okay. Well, Jed, uh, let me just... Uh, let me see. Confirm here if I understand what you're uh, you're looking for. It looks like uh, you'd like to be in that uh, that Rambler plan at yeah. 250 or below. You'd like to have a large home site with a three car garage. Uh, a walkout home site would be desirable. Definitely want to be in Evanston. Uh, it looks like you're also talking to Castle Creek Homes and are also considering used homes if you could find the right one. But sounds like that hasn't happened yet. Uh, you may need some help selling your home in, in Georgia. You'd like to get that sold first. And it also looks like uh, we need to get your financing uh, solidified uh, uh, as well. Uh, there'll be five people, it sounds like, 
uh, enjoying uh, your new home, and uh, ideally you'd like to be in as, as soon as possible. Um, does that sound about right? Yeah, and, and my other concern, the reason I look at used homes versus new is I'm extremely lazy and don't want to do, uh, don't want to install a yard or a fence. I, I don't know how to finance either of those. I've got limited money, so I don't know how to do, I don't know how much it's going to cost me to put in a yard and a fence. Okay, and that's definitely things that we can uh, we can discuss. Now, here's, I'm just going to take a time out here. If I was Jed and I knew I had to drive, how far is it from your office to Twin Ridges? Is it 45 minutes or an hour one way? It's an hour. An hour one way. I'm going to spend some more time on the phone getting a little bit deeper into, you know, financing what he's looking for, so on and so forth. If my model home is 10 minutes away, I'm going to go ahead and close for an appointment at the model home, you know, based on what I, you know, Jed's qual qualifications. So we'll just assume that we're not driving an hour and that uh, wherever we're meeting Jed is going to be, say, within 10 minutes away. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, close for the appointment. I'd say, you know, Jed, uh, we have uh, actually one uh, Rambler plan that I can show you that's uh, available right now in uh, Twin Ridges, and I've also got several floor plans that I can review with you, some of which are not on our, on our website. Um, I've got some time this Saturday at 11 o'clock, or I could do uh, this Thursday at 4 o'clock uh, to meet you at the particular, at the neighborhood. Uh, we'll show you some floor plans. We'll look at some available home sites so we can talk a little bit further on, on financing. Uh, which one of those dates and times will work better for you? Um. <coughs> Is there any chance I can meet you at Saturday at 6? Uh, Saturday at 6? I can't do 6, but we could do uh, 4 o'clock. Would Saturday at 4 o'clock work? Uh, yeah, I can make that work. Okay, so Saturday at 4 o'clock. And what I'll do, Jed, is I'll send you some information ahead of time on Nielsen Homes, uh, a couple of floor plans uh, for you to consider. And uh, would it be okay, Jed, uh, or would you like to, to talk to, uh, we have a preferred lender that could give you, go over all your different financing options uh, for uh, Twin Ridge? Uh, I, I really don't want to talk to a lender until I find out what I can buy. Okay, and uh, based on your finance programs right now that you're that you're discussing with your credit union, is there one that you're leaning towards? Um, probably the least amount of money down as possible. Okay, can I make a suggestion? Can I make a suggestion, Jed? Yeah, that'd be great. Uh, in order to make the most use of your time and make sure that you're you know focusing on the area that you're most comfortable with, I would recommend at least a ten minute phone call. Uh, with our preferred lender just to go through the different programs that have the least amount of money down because based on your individual situation you might find that one program works better than the other and that would ultimately uh, change your preference on the type of home that you that you build. Would something like that make sense? Yeah, definitely. Okay, and why don't, what's a good time to have um, our preferred lender, his name is Andy, uh, call you and uh, we'll want to make sure that your girlfriend's available too. Will she be uh, financing the home uh, with you? Probably not. Okay, so just be you I financing. I still want to know what the payment is. So okay. So what, what would be a good time for him to call you uh, for about 10, 15-minute call just to go over some of the different options? Probably around 6. Okay, around 6. And uh, would today work or tomorrow be better? Today's great. Okay, I will have Andy call you at 6 o'clock. And what's the best number for him to get a hold of you at? 801-940-8100. 801-940-8100. Uh, okay, so Andy will call you tonight at 6. I'm going to send you some information on uh, our different floor plans, uh, some different available home sites, and then we will see you uh, at the model home Saturday at 4 o'clock, and I'll email you on Friday. Um, just to confirm that that's a good time. I just want to confirm, too, that your uh, Bertha uh, will be there with you Saturday. Is that right? <laughs> so, yeah, I was trying to think of a better name. Yeah, uh, yeah I'll bring Bertha. Great. Well, she's going to be one of the main decision makers. We want to make sure that she's there as well. Fantastic, Jed. Thanks for your time. Bye-bye. Okay. So you can see how, how that works. I got a lot of information out of him, not... Um, 
um, you know, everything on this sheet. But you can see sort of how the, the philosophy works. Now what I'm going to do is we're going to go and look at the tagging system within Ubix. And so you can see how this all ties together. Uh, I'm going to start here with prospect entry. So you all know how to do this, customer's prospect entry to get to this particular screen. Oh, you know what? We're going to assume Jed is already in the system, right? Okay. So I'm going to pull. I got Adriana on here. So I'm going to go in, into the system here, and I'm going to go to uh, uh, maintain a customer. Okay, and you can see the, the, the screen here. Now, we've got first name, last name already. I already have Jed's email because he's in the system. So I'm going to go ahead and put in everything else that I have. So if I go to more options here, I can put all that other information, addresses, phone numbers. I can put Bertha in here, you know, salesperson, so on and so forth. Hey, um, can I cut in real quick just to yeah. tell myself something? <clears throat> yeah. So um, we are totally missing out on traffic right now. Um, that <coughs> that you guys could be having this exact same phone call with. I'm talking. About. I have five. Yeah, I would curse about it. Like that's how many we have. And so if you guys will buy into the system. And get two people walking your model home. Get four each of. So that's why we wanted to make sure that you understood this whole thing because I, I know that you guys view this as difficult and whatever else, but um, <clears throat> these are probably better than walk-ins to the model. They actually are. They convert higher. Web leads convert higher than walk-ins of the model just because people eliminate you online. So if they've already gone online and they talk to you, it means they've eliminated some of your competitors. Yeah, because typically model people are just mm -hmm. driving around, signs, pulling in. They don't know anything about us. They're, they're <coughs> nothing. But if they've gone online, they've gone to multiple websites of multiple builders. They've said this one sucks, this one sucks, this one I'll look into. And so they've already eliminated multiple locations, multiple builders. And so these these leads are more valuable than the people that walk in your model. And and that's statistically, that's experience, that's everything. So that's why it's important that we learn how to do these phone calls because um, my assumption is that you all might feel awkward calling someone that has only been to our website. Okay, we're going to keep moving here. I'm going to let Jed finish up his conversation, and then we'll, uh, we'll get him back on. But uh, first and foremost, and you guys can type into the question box here if you're not uh, uh, if you're not uh, uh, tuned in. Uh, would what would you say I am? Am I an uh, a D now? So I came in as a lead. Would I, based on my conversation, would I be uh, ready, willing, and able, ready and willing, or just one of the uh, one of the three here, based on that conversation? I got you um, unmuted again, not Jed. So maybe you guys can in interject here as well. So what would I be? Am I am I uh, ready and willing and able, ready and willing, or ready? Ready and willing. Did you hear that? Yeah, that's exactly right. I'm really a B now, right? Okay, so I just clicked on ready and willing. I changed to a B uh, customer, so now my lifecycle stage went from lead to prospect. Okay, now, here's the tags in the system, and we're going to walk through this right now based on my conversation with Jed. So first of all, how did I find, how did I find Jed? What was the source? Do you guys remember? Google, internet. Google, exactly. So I'm going to check here. Okay. Now, this is interesting. What we can do is, you see location here, I, we can go in, we can modify these tags individually for, you, for each of you. So we can add every single location that you have 
uh, right now, and we can also have an unknown and an offsite. So in this case, I wanted to be the location was pretty specific. It was Twin Twin Ridge, right, Jed? Right. Right. So what you'll have is a checkbox here, and this is something you want to make a note of. Is you'll want to make sure that Adriana is made. You know, send her an email with all your individual locations, and we will put them into the system. And for remodeling, uh, you know, Marty and Mike, if you guys want to just make a list of your most visited cities that you work in, we can pop those in here as well. So in this case, I can go ahead and I can modify that. I don't have it. We'll just click on Spring Meadows since this is a different uh, program. Now, price range. What was my price range? What was Jed's price range, I should say? 200 to 250. Yep, 200 to 250. Now, here's the nice thing about price range. We go all the way down to zero up to a million. We can also, you know, modify this, but I can select more than one price range. So I got 2 to 225, 225 to 250. I can save both of those. Okay, when would Jed like to start? As soon as possible, exactly. So he wants to start as soon as possible, so he's telling me to go fast, which we would assume is an A, but we've got to get him financed, too. Okay, uh, what was his primary reason for moving? Job. Job transfer, exactly. Okay, and everything he's interested in. So we know he's interested in building, that's why he contacted us, but what else was he interested in? He, was, he wanted to be as soon as possible, so probably buying new, right? Right? Building, buying new, buying used. Buying used, and he also might need help selling his current home. He might need a referral back in Georgia to get his current home sold. Okay. Was, was he pre-qualified by, uh, by a lender? No. Not really. I mean, he really wasn't. He said he had talked to his credit unit, but nothing was finalized. Okay, type of home desired. What was he looking for? Bedroom. Yep, so I click on that here. Did we get into bedrooms? No. We didn't really get into bedrooms, but how many people were going to be enjoying his house? Five. Five, Five right. So he's probably going to want at least four bedrooms. So I might make an assumption here based on that that he's going to want four bedrooms. If I don't want to do that, I can just you know leave it as unknown and I can come back to it and fill it in, in later. But here I'll make it as, as four. Okay, home site preference. Remember we talked about walkout. But the other thing I can get into, once I get into a, a deeper conversation with him at the initial consult or even on the phone, I can get into if he wants mountain views, water views, he wants me in a cul-de-sac, he wanted a large yard, I can get into backyard orientations, you know, all these information here. Of course, the reason I want to go through and I want to get as much of this information as possible, if I go into a project like Twin Ridge and let's say there's 20 home sites available, when I got 20 home sites available, there's no urgency. But when I find out he wants a walkout on a cul-de-sac with a large yard and a mountain view, now I've got one that will work for him. And so now I've got urgency. What, what, if, I, what if they're all the same? They're never they all, all the same. Stuff. They, they they're, never, they're, they're never all the same. You've got to come up with a reason why one is better than the other, and it could come down to if there's a utility pedestal you know, on one home site and not on another. There's always got to be a reason. One you know, arguably has a better view. One arguably is, you know, you go on the plat map, one is 1,000 square feet larger than another one. Or three, you know, you always got to come up with a reason that one is better than the other. And even go looking at sun orientation. You know, most of the time people want a rear orientation. They want, you know, south or west. They want they want sun. Some people prefer maybe east even. So, you know, in townhomes we always look at where do I get the max amount of light? So we're gonna focus on west and south as being primary. North is typically not as highly desirable and east maybe is uh, like a second or third. So you gotta you gotta make up that's why, Jed, I mean, just from a pricing standpoint, this is a little, I digress a bit here, but you never should have home sites priced the same either because as soon as you price them the same, you're saying there's no difference. As soon as you price them different, 
then you have a story or an argument as why one is better than another. So even if the pricing is only a couple hundred dollars difference, it's much better to do that so then you can build your, your story. And I have something actually, and I think it's in game day coaching, but it's called a home site characteristics sheet. It's where you can go through each and every one of your home sites in inventory. It's a great exercise to do. And you just make a list of all the differences in your home sites. And then based on that, you can, you can adjust your pricing. So when someone comes in and they start and you start going through your needs analysis here and say, hey, what do you want in your home site? Then you go to your home site characteristics and sheet and says, okay, well, we've got one that has a south orientation on a cul-de-sac with a, a mountain view. Let's go take a look at it. And that's how you get your, your reservation. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. Um, does he need to sell his home? Sure. Yep, he sure does. And, uh, you know, possibly, you know, it wouldn't be me doing a CMA, but I would help him with the CMA. Okay. Is, was his current home on the market? No. Nope, not yet. And how much, how long has he been looking? Three months, right. So we'll go, we'll put it here three to, three to five months. Now, what I will do is I will save this information because this is Adriana. Okay, so now I've got all my tag sent. So now, Marty, you asked the question, where do I put Bertha? You know, and, and what I would do is I would simply just go into add notes here, and I would just put in, you know, now, now he's a prospect, I would just put in, say, a completed note. This action is just an other. And I could just put in here some notes on our conversation. So Bertha's involved, you know, this, this is the place, this is the job he's... Uh, wants to or job he's, he just took. This is uh, the situation where he's renting. You know, call the lender and set up an appointment at five or whatever, six o'clock on such such a day. All those other additional notes that I got, I would put them all in here, and then go ahead and save that. I'd also want to go Runa. ahead. Yes, go ahead, Runa. So this is a good place to use a general note or so differentiate between a general note and a follow-up note. Can I do a general note from this, from that a customer screen, from maintain a customer? Yeah, you have it on the right-hand side uh, saying general notes. There are three general notes and this person here. Oh, over here. Oh, okay. All right, so let me, yeah. let me do that. Yeah, because they are not time-based. They are general notes. And Darius, you might want to chip in here, but... Um, so I would just click here to add a note to put a general note in. Yes, I see that. Yes. And you typically will leave the... Actually, I think you can do both places, but leave the uh, the, 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 the follow-up date blank, and we become uh -huh. a general note. Okay. And so for status, I wouldn't choose any of these either. Just a plan completely ignored. Just leave it as a general note. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. And I can do that. But then I also said I would email him on Friday. So I would go right. in, and I would plan to send him an email on Friday. So tomorrow. Whatever, and I would, you know, I'd say, email Jed to confirm Saturday at for appointment at Twin Ridge. And this is a good reason to have a general note and a follow-up note because the the general stuff would be lost uh, and difficult to find in the in the follow-up note. But a general note is 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 right visible to you, you know, right there. So I could save and close this. I can add to my Google Calendar. I can add to my Outlook Calendar. And some of you, I don't know if you're using Outlook Calendar, sometimes this note has been showing up twice. And I know Darius is, is uh, working on that to, uh, to correct that. But I go ahead and save and, and close that. And I am all, uh, I'm, I'm all set. So I got my general note, and I've also got my follow-up note for my email. Now, the other thing I'm going to do, obviously, once I, once I save this, is I want to go in and I want to do a planned meeting. So this is going to be my initial consultation. And that's going to be, we said, oh, that was Saturday, excuse me. I made this wrong. That was Saturday, and that was going to be at 6 o'clock. Oops, did that wrong.
And then I can put my note in here, you know, meet Jed at the model home, whatever. Uh, the other thing that I wanted to mention to you all is something that's new as far as sending email. Uh, this would work great if you're doing like a similar type follow-up. Like I know, Marty, when you have a lead that comes into the system, you are oftentimes sending out a, uh, uh, you're oftentimes sending out, say, an email for Mike. And that, and that email might be um, uh, saying, you know, hey, would you like to talk to Mike? I see you came in the system. Would you like to talk to Mike? And all of you were actually implementing the Talk To program if you, don't, if you don't have it already. So if you have a similar email, you can go ahead and just, you know, say this is an email I like to use a lot for converting D2. I can go ahead and I can just create that new template, type this out, and I would say, um, you know, uh, D lead intro, something like that. When I hit save that, then that's going to show up here in this particular template. And this is new, right down here where it says include note text and email. So if I go ahead and click on this now, and I go send email to customer, what will happen is whatever note came in here will show up will show up here and uh, so that was um, uh, something we had talked about doing asking about you guys can easily create your own templates uh, you know based on the things that you like to say and do if you've had a successful email just copy it paste it in there now one note of caution on this uh, if you want to use your layout you know which is I'm just gonna copy this right now Oops, I gotta do a control C. Control C is copied by the way from the screen. But if you want to use your, your custom layout that we created, so you just click on the button up here and it's gonna pull up Jeremy. I'll create make this full screen. You have to copy and paste. So I would come in here and then I would just do control V, which is paste. It is in here. If you try to use the layout, if you try to use that function I just did where you check box and include that note in the email and then you go to layout, it's going to override that. So if you want to use this type of template, you have to do the control C to copy, control V to paste. Otherwise, if you're just going to use a simple text email, um, it will work just like I showed you. Marty had a question too. Um, the clock, for when, I, when I'm setting a calendar function here, uh, like 0600, is this, has this been converted to a 12-hour clock or is it still a 24-hour clock, uh, Runa? Uh, this is still a 24-hour clock and, you know, we looked at using it, uh, you know, the AM, PM, but there are some technical problems in that. So it probably will remain, you know, a military time stamp. So then instead of 6 o'clock, this is going to, I need to change this to 1800. So otherwise, it's going to show up my calendar at 6 a.m. So I need to go 1,800 there. Hopefully that makes sense, Marty. That answers your question. Those of you that are in the military will appreciate that. <laughs> A lot of people, once they get out of the military, they stay on 24-hour clocks. Okay. Uh, any other questions or thoughts on um, this new functionality here or the tagging system? Then you save that, so then when you call them again or they come into the model again, you just pull that up so you don't, basically if you're working with multiple customers and you forget who they are and what they want, how, how do we pull that up again to, to look at all that? Well, if you want to see it again, I mean, here's some of my follow-up notes or test notes we put in here. So any notes I put in here obviously will show up here. But if I want to see that information again, Runa, correct me if I'm wrong, I just go into maintain a customer. Yes. And then I would just, th this is rolled up. I just unroll my tags and I'll see everything. Perfect. And then in the maintain customers, you can also select on it. If you want to send out, uh, let's say, uh, any announcement to a group of people with similar characteristics, yes. you can create a list from this. 
Right. So now if – that's something we haven't done training on yet, but I mentioned before, all of you individually can create your own email list for things going on if you have a specific neighborhood or neighborhoods you're, you're working in. So if I want to go into and I want to maintain a contact list right now, I think – do I go to maintain or do, or do I go to maintain customers to pull up and create my list? Maintain customers. Okay. So what you'll see now when you go to more options, you'll see all the tags in here. So let's say you have a home that was, um, or let's say a home site that was reserved and now the person went away and it's back on the market. Well, what I can do is I can go in and I can, you know, into my tagging here and I can go uh, into, let's see, housing needs, primary reason, current home, home site preference right here. And what I can do is I can find all the people that are interested in a walkout home site, and I, you know, I can search by locations as well. So I can create unique lists from this and then be able to contact those particular lists or look up those people and call them. I can create a list for an email, for an e-announcement, send out a mass email. Uh, and by mass, I mean it might be to 15 people. Uh, or I can um, you know, just pull up and see who I have a phone number for and pick up the phone and call them, that sort of thing. So, Quinn, this obviously with lead source too. You know, you're going to be able to run reports on, um, you know, where people are coming from. So if you're doing special events like Parade of Homes or online advertising or, you know, any of you you guys can do this, you'll be able to put this in here. And keep in mind, all of these are you're able to edit. Um, you just, whatever you want it to be, get that information to Adriana, and she will make the updates uh, for you. We're also looking on an additional, I mean, this is hot off the press. Uh, the next the next bigger thing is to come up with uh, reporting on this and also export to Excel so you can do whatever you want with this. Yep. Quinn, are you so there? Uh, let, let's say we get a new community that has large home sites. Mm -hmm. We could go into this and, and look at everyone that's been interested in large home sites and send them an email and say, hey, we've got this new community with three-quarter acre lots. Exactly right. Yep, exactly right. Keep in mind when you're, and you can also add more tags or less, or you could take tags out. So if you have something specific or unique in your particular marketplace and you want to be able to track it, you can add the category and you can add the tags, you know, right here. And so you can track anything that you want. The idea, you know, what I started with here, the idea was is just going through the main needs analysis. When I'm talking to someone on the phone, what are the main things I need to know in order to determine if they're a viable prospect if I should set up the meeting? You know, that's the, the lead to prospect conversion process. So we put those on here. But you may want to know something more, and you can add that in here and, uh, you know, put it in the tags. Now, one other thing that's unique about the tagging system that I want to uh, show you guys. If you are, um, let's see if I have Adriana in here as a lead again. Yeah, I do right here. When you are walking somebody through stages now, so let's say you get someone in that comes into the system just like we did before that is a lead. And I want to go ahead and I want to update them. I had a conversation. I want to update them to a prospect. So I go into maintain a customer. And I've got, I've got lead here. She's as a C customer right now. Well, what I want to say is, you know what? Um, I talked to her and now she's ready. The house is on the market. Um, just haven't sold it yet so they can't get their financing. So they went from a C to a B. So you say it's a prospect. When I go to save this, you're going to get an error message now because you haven't filled out any of the tags. So what this does is it forces you to make sure you tag everything you know. And when you're going through the system, and if you don't know something, every single category has an unknown. So I just tag unknown. So what you need to understand is this. If you're going to convert a lead to a prospect, you've got to fill out anything. If a lead comes into the system that is not auto-generated by the system, in other words, it didn't come off of your website, um, the only thing you have to do is tag the source, the advertising source. So in other words, they came from a print ad or they came from, you know, it was a sign call 
or you know it was the uh, home show that sort of thing that's the only thing you have to do but when you try to make that update now you'll notice that you hit save and you're gonna get an error message it's not gonna let you save until those tags are filled out does that make does that make sense Jed and Nielsen since I can you only guys that are on right now yeah. yeah okay and Quinn, I know you like the uh, the leads the lead source here, so you can make this more specific. Any of you can make this more specific. Yvonne, you're doing the Southern Living Home Show. You can add a category for that. And obviously, once these people are tagged, as soon as you start spitting out, you know, buyers, you can go back at quarterly or end of the year, and you can run reports. And you can say, okay, what was the originating lead source? How did they find us? And so if you're looking at committing a large chunk of your advertising budget to a certain something, you'll be able to see how many of those people converted into you know, leads, prospects, buyers, and, and owners. It'll be very, very helpful um, moving forward. You'll have all that information. Any other questions from anyone else, too? Raise your hand or pop them into the question box. Otherwise, I'm going to move on. I'm going to show you something new on traffic entry um, that re that is coming from these tags. All right, hearing none. <clears throat> Each week, we've set this up so that as a salesperson, you can go in and you can enter um, your your traffic entry. So let's see. So if I go under customers, I'm going to go to traffic entry. And what is new here again is I can now, I'm going to select a salesperson, so we'll select Adriana. <clears throat> Remember, the week always begins on a Sunday and ends on a, um, ends on a Monday, so we'll say it's this week. Um, so I can put a value in here. I could say three people, and now it'll have a please select tag. So these are all your, your sources, so special event, print, whatever. Obviously, there's people that come into the model homes through cross the threshold of your door, but don't get into the system because they're not a viable lead or prospect. But you still want to know how they got there. So if you have 10 people each week, you know, for your traffic, you may be uh, registered five. So they're now in prospect entry into the system. But what about the other five? How do they get there? You know, and so now you're able to track those other five, you know, everyone that came in through prospect entry, or excuse me, through traffic entry as well. Uh, so what you would do now when you're, when you're doing traffic is you would take your total amount of traffic for the week, or you can do it by the day too, whatever, and you would say you would break down the, the units here based on the source. So you might have three from, say, the print ad, three from signs, two from Internet, one by driving by that sort of thing and you would break it down that way and then it'll be it'll show now here as this was the date this was the salesperson this was the how they got there and this is how many each week and then you'll be able to roll that up into export that into an excel file as well just to look at again from an advertising standpoint where people are coming from so and this is all active in your systems right now so at the end of the week here um, just make sure that you are using those those tags. And Runa Darius, will it allow me to save the traffic uh, entry without a tag, or is that um, is that a required field now? I think that's a Darius question. If you are on Darius, it's it's that. not required. So it's you not can required. Add, uh, yes. Okay, and no. I guess I'll throw that question out here to owners um, who are on. Do you want that tag to be a requirement? for traffic entry, yes or no? And remember, it can be unknown. It's a, a totally valid uh, category. Yes. I, um, I definitely prefer it because that would, that would really help our marketing campaigns that, uh, you know, if we have a particular rambler that we're going to do a one-day event for, and we could just go in and send it to all everybody that wants a Rambler. Well, no. Keep in mind that's different. This is just for traffic oh. entry. This is if when it's prospect, when it's a lead entry, it's already there. You cannot put a lead into the system without at least marking the advertising source. 
So that's already done there. This is just for traffic. Do you want that to be required or do you want it to be optional like it is right now? Um, I think if it's already on the, the initial, um, the, yeah, when you initially tag it, I think that's fine. I think this just seems maybe more repetitive. Okay, so we'll leave it. We'll leave it optional, um, unless I and I haven't heard from Star, or Yvonne, or uh, uh, Marty, or Mike, but anybody else. But we'll leave it uh, as optional right now. All right, um, that is everything for tags. So I'm going to move on, unless anybody else has a question on tags. Okay, hearing none, we will keep uh, we will keep moving on. Okay, so what I wanted to do today is I wanted to look at uh, sort of the process of taking that lead to prospect conversion. So we just did the initial phone call and we just set the appointment to get them on site. And so now we're looking at the initial consultation. Uh, there's a few things that need to happen between the time we set the appointment and the time that they actually we we meet with them. So I'm going to walk through those, and I have one question for people, too, that I'd like to get some, some feedback on. We did some training a, a, a little while ago where we talked about digital consultation and really treating it like an event where you would have a pre-event, the event itself, and then a post-event. So the pre-event is the, the lead up to the meeting. So this would be maybe a, a phone call, the email you, information you would send out prior to the meeting. Then you have the meeting itself, which is the event, and then the post-event would be the follow-up uh, afterwards. So with that in mind, we start with the send ahead. And all of you should have a send ahead. I'm going to go ahead and pull out one for new homes. Is there anyone out there that has not taken and modified this and updated it that for them for themselves? Looks like uh looks like this right here from the top. So Jed, have you guys, do you guys have this done? No, I I think this was one of the things that we that you talked to me about in the very beginning, and I don't. I'm going to be honest. I think I forgot about those. Oh boy. Okay, no pudding for Quinn for dinner tonight. Yeah. No, and five demerits, Adriana. Make a note. Okay, does every does anybody else not have a send ahead? Uh, raise your hand. Okay, so okay, so Star says me too, Quinn. Don't feel bad. Yvonne doesn't have it done. Mike and Marty, do you guys have um, a send ahead? Okay, so Marty has it done. So Marty make, is making everyone else feel bad. Let's gonna let's walk through this send ahead. Uh, very very important part here. The idea behind the send ahead is. I've had a conversation with them on the phone. I've built a little bit of rapport. I've gone through my, you know, not maybe not my 100% needs analysis, but a lot of it to determine, yeah, these people are a viable prospect. So what I want to do now is I want to build up as much value for my company and give them a heads up of what's going to happen at this meeting in order for me to convert them to the next step, which is usually a home site reservation after the initial consultation. So the head, send ahead is broken into a couple of different uh, a couple of different parts. Number one, it should be a downloadable PDF. So what I have on the screen here is a is a uh, Microsoft Word document. But what you need to do is modify it and then convert it to a PDF. And then you need to send it to Adriana. So please make a note right now to modify this with your information and convert it to a PDF, send it to Adriana. She will put it into your link library, and so you can easily just attach it as a link to an email within Ubix. And uh, one thing, um, uh, just a heads up, uh, Jed, for you guys, you're going to need to create individual send-aheads for your salespeople because the location of the meeting is going to vary and obviously the contact information for the salesperson. So you'll need as many send aheads as you have salespeople and or locations. Okay. So it's an overview right. of the meeting. Number one. Real quick. Yeah, where, go ahead, where, quick. Where's the um, the template? 
I will send out the link. It's in Game Day Coaching. I'll send out the link as a follow-up here so you can download it. Okay, the one question I have for you is, as part of the send-ahead, do you guys want to create a survey like we did for events? In other words, once you set an appointment with someone, you give them the send-ahead, and then there's also a link to a, an online survey, which would ask them you know, more specific questions about what they want to accomplish, you know, that, that sort of thing. So we'll get into that a little bit later here. I'll show you an example. Video testimonials, if you don't have them, your send ahead uh, should have written testimonials on there. Again, that's for building confidence. And then we're going to, the, the last part of the send ahead is going to be the tips and questions asked. This is very important that you guys read through these questions, take out the ones that don't apply to you, modify the ones that you don't like, and maybe add something that you want them to ask. The main, the main uh, rationale behind the tips and questions asked is you want, if they're going to interview multiple builders, you want them to use this on your other builders because they will not be builder competitors. They will not be prepared for it like you will. It's going to make them look bad. Uh, and then uh, uh, let's, take a, let's take a closer look at the send ahead now. We'll break it down. Again, this is the one for new homes. There is one for modeling, but Marty, you and Mike already have it done. So, uh, this is the the, mod, the parsing to modify, obviously, in parentheses here. So this is just an overview, a little bit here. Meeting time and place. So most of the time, you're going to be meeting, meeting in the model home. Star, Yvonne, if you guys are not meeting in the model home, if you're meeting at your office, if you're going to meet at a coffee shop, uh, you know, you'll, you'll need to pick sort of a, a fixed location where you normally uh, would meet. Maybe you go to their house. I mean... It's up to you. But if you're going to create this into a PDF and have it as a link, this location can't be fluid. It needs to be uh, um, set. So it's pretty easy if you have a model home because you just put the address in here. And if you want to you know, create that address as a link to, say, a Google map for directions or back to your website, you can just hot link it. So we're going to do an educational walkthrough, get your feedback about your next home. It's going to take one to two hours. Very important. All decision makers should attend. Okay, how many how many of you have had a one legger? Right, you get to the meeting and all of a sudden, somebody says, "Oh, my husband or wife couldn't make it." How many has that happened? Any happen to anybody at Nielsen Homes? Sounds like often. Yes, nothing more frustrating, right? Because you're like, "What do I do now? Do I go ahead with my presentation?" Because you know, if you do, the spouse that's not there is going to shoot it down. Or do you risk upsetting the person that did show up by rescheduling? So this is something that you put in your send ahead and also, like I did with Jed, confirm that both decision makers or all decision makers will be there. So the most important choice you're going to make is the building team to hire. If your schedule changes, let us know. So some things to think about, just some simple bullet points here. Okay, Bring ideas from what do you like about your current home? What do you wish were different? You know, what services are you looking for from your builder? This ties directly into one of the, the questions we ask at the initial consultation. You know, what kind of home building experience do you want? And what concerns do you have? This is where you can go back and put important links in. So if you want community links, if you want a link for your neighborhood, you know, your particular website, maybe design library, your available homes and models, your photo galleries, testimonials again, uh, if there's an about page. On your, on your website. You can put some links in there. Um, so now we've included a tip sheet we'll talk about next. Thinking about their budget, you know, get them to start uh, thinking about that and you also put information about your preferred lender in here. You know, here's their information, feel free to contact them or you do like, you know what I did with Jed is I actually scheduled the time for my preferred lender to call Jed. That's what all of you should be doing. You know, don't just hand out his or her card. Don't just say, you know, call them at your convenience because you know people don't do it. But I schedule a time to do that initial phone call with that preferred lender so they can get some basic information, talk to them about the programs, and then ideally before you'd even meet, you'd be able to talk to your lender and find out, you know, what qualifications are and, and what uh, loan program they're looking at. Do we have time to, the, the way you worded that, um, was perfect because uh, 
I have a horrible time getting my people to contact the lender. They all just say, oh, I want to find out about the house, and then I'll deal with the lender. And, and the way I, I should have been typing notes, but the, the way you worded it. Yeah, there's a simple question. It's called the showstopper. You guys might want to all write this down. Anytime you are, you know, you want one of your leads or prospects to do something, but they're sort of giving you the runaround, there's one question you can ask called the showstopper, which will get them to stop, shut up, and listen to what you have to say. I don't, do you remember what it was, Jed? What I, what I use, or does anybody remember what I said to you? Um. Can I share a thought you might find valuable? So you said, Jed, you said, I really want to find the house that I'm looking for before I get pre-qualified. And I said, Jed, can I share a thought you might find valuable? To which you said, sure. So I'm not telling you what to do. I'm just simply sharing a thought. So can you share a thought it might find valuable? You know, based on your unique requirements, you know, for your loan, I would suggest that you find out what your options are first because that's going to save you time from you know making the wrong decision on a house that doesn't fit your loan your loan uh, uh, needs or whatever so so I said something like so so you don't waste time it's always back to what's in it for you so you don't waste time looking at a home that's not going to fit your needs because it won't fall into your lender your finance program Can I sh you know I would suggest at least having a 10 or 15 minute phone call with our preferred lender to go over your options So if you want to ever just stop a presentation because it's going the wrong way or a conversation, you just pull that out. Can I share a thought you might find valuable? Okay? So you said, uh, can I share a thought you might find valuable? Based on your unique requirements for your loan, I would suggest that you contact our preferred lender so that you can go over your option so you don't waste your time. Well, I can, I can, but it was the context of the conversation. I was scheduling a meeting with you. I really wanted you to get with my preferred lender to get your financing figured out before that meeting. So what I said, to, so what I said in that context, said to make the most of your time, you know, when we're together, and to make sure that we're directing you towards the right floor plan and home. It would be best if you knew all of your uh, loan options. You know, based on your unique situation. You mentioned, Jed, you want to put down as little money as possible, right? Right. Because that's, that's what you told me. You know, so there's, there's going to be specific loan programs that are, some are going to be better for you than others. You know, so what I'd, my, my thought would be I would suggest having a 10-minute phone conversation with our preferred lender so you're aware of your options. That makes sense, doesn't it? That's a tie-down. That makes sense, doesn't it? To which you said, yeah, that's fine. And I would say, okay, you know, what's the best number for my lender to call you at? Okay, should I do it today or tomorrow? Alternative of choice, close. I don't care what you say. You said, oh, yeah, today's great. Okay, so Andy is going to call you today at 6 o'clock and at this phone number. And you gave me your cell phone. And if I'm sending an email out right away based on our conversation, I could say, you know, hey, Andy, this is Rick from Nielsen Homes. Just want to introduce Jed, Jed to you. Uh, Jed would like you to call him today at 6 o'clock just to go over some of his loan options. He's considering, you know, whatever, Evanston or, you know, t Twin Ridge, and he'd like to be at 250 or under. Simple as that. Much better for you to take control over that versus handing out a card or just giving them or emailing them the lender's phone number. Yeah, I found that pointless. That none of them. They'll never call. They never call. No, you gotta. You always gotta force the issue. So we're getting down to the end here. So this is where Quinn, you know, you're gonna have to update with individual salesperson information. Make sure you get your logo on here, preferred lender. You know, if you if you do have video testimonials, get a web screenshot, uh, and then link those to wherever you have them on your website, uh, and then convert those into a documents into a PDF. Okay, so this is a home builder tips and questions to ask part of the send ahead. You guys really got to look at this because you don't want them asking a question that you're not prepared for here. It's going to make you look like a, a real buffoon if, uh, uh, if you don't know the answer to this. So what we're getting at here is, 
you know, is the most important choice as a building team to hire. We're really going to focus away from the sticks and bricks and really focus on the process and the team to hire because the only way you can truly differentiate yourselves in this business is through your process and through your intangibles. Um, so that, you know, get down to design and your quality control team and your locations and, and so on and so forth because sticks and bricks, you know, just simply a commodities. Uh, so here's some tips we're starting out with. So we're talking about the service industry. Uh, you know, your builders, your partner, and your consultant. Uh, and everyone says they do quality work. Be a skeptic. Go see their work. Finished home is only as good as the design. And then this is important. I bolded this because you're going to bring this up again at the initial consultation. How are homes priced? Well, Roughly, if you take the take the home side out of it, roughly a third of the home, roughly, is going to be materials and products, and about two thirds is the labor. Okay, so what we're talking about is that labor costs can vary wildly based on the specific installation methods and skill level a home builder requires. That's a major part of what you're going to be talking about in the initial consultation, is the scope of work. How do you want these things installed? Because that will directly relate to are you a low price builder or are you a low cost builder? And last time I checked, none of the people on this call were the Walmart of their local markets. And so there's always people that are going to be undercutting them on price. So if you're going to justify a higher price, you have to create value through the home is, is installed or is built right the first time so that you have a low cost of ownership down the road. Okay, check with references. So you're going to need to bring references with you. All of you should have a reference list and don't just have three or five. Give them 50. Give them 100. Give them whatever you built for in the last, you know, two or three years. Uh, because you're transparent. Hey, call any of these people you want. Knock on doors if they're in a neighborhood. Go talk to anybody you want, you know and uh, tell them how we, uh, um, how we handle our business. And then if you are members of the B Better Business Bureau, put it on there. If you're not, you're going to want to take this off. And you can also obviously you know, put a hot link on this right to your BBB uh, review information so people will, will check on that. This is a big deal. I would recommend all of you be members of the Better Business Bureau because uh, it's a great confidence builder. Okay, so now there's questions, and I believe there's 20 on here. These are what you have to review and make sure that you're comfortable with. So, so they start out very simple. Uh, for those of you that are doing like Yvonne, you and Ted have a lot of education, you know, that, that you do. You're very involved with, NA, with NAHB, uh, with Southern Living. So this is something that you want to talk about. And what is the benefit to your, your prospects and your clients, you know, from that education? Uh, your professional designers, you know, you'll be able to talk about them here. If you have all subcontractors, I would probably take question number four out. If you have some employees that are doing some work on the job sites, I would leave that question in because obviously there's a built-in inherent trust to someone who's an employee versus an outside contractor. Uh, written scope of work, product installation methods for each trade. You know, and again, most of your production uh, people, your your uh, have a certain way they want stuff installed, completed. So whether it's just relating to cleanup, whether it's relating to you know meeting local uh, codes, or perhaps meeting Energy Star, or you know if you're building under some sort of a green certification, and maybe it's just something that you're doing because it's, you notice it's it's a warranty issue, but you probably all have a list of these things. So you're going to ask that question. Okay, professional associations you belong to. Uh, your bank. You know, I've had clients that have actually provided a letter from their bank. This is especially when the uh, financial crisis is going on. Two people that say that they're in good standing with the bank. Um, so again, this is another confidence builder, especially if you have a well-known local bank that you work with. Uh, lumber. You know, who's the contact person at your lumber yard? Obviously, your, your lumber rep is a huge part of your business, doing the takeoffs and uh, coordinating a lot of the uh, different materials and products you're using in your home. Uh, what's your relationship with your, with your trade partners? You know, do you have a long-term relationship with them, 
or are you constantly receiving bids to get the lowest price? Most of you would probably say we have a long-term relationship, so you're going to promote that. Okay, written timetable for project construction. I'm sure you all have that. You know, who's your daily contact? Once you get into the production process, hopefully it's not you as a salesperson. Uh, if you have a homeowner's manual, leave this question in here. If you do not have a homeowner's manual, you're going to want to modify it or take it out. You should all have a copy of your warranty, though. Uh, if you have long-term key employees, you know, that's a question you want to leave in. What's the cleaning process? What's the what is the uh, quality uh, quality control process? Okay, how many homes have you built similar to mine? Everyone wants doesn't want to be the first one, right? Oh, sure, we build million dollar homes when your average sales price is two fifty. You know, nobody wants to deal with with uh, with people like that. So if you're going to sell a million dollar home, you say, yeah, well, we've built sixteen other homes just like you. We can handle this. Um, this is an important one here too. You know, how much are they, if you're using allowances, how much are they deviating from allowances? If you are doing selections up front prior to construction, you're going to again promote that as part of your process. Hey, we remove the unknowns. You're not going to have any allowances going into this. You know, that's the great part about the design build process, that collaborative effort. Change order policy. You know, how does that work? You might as well talk about it. You know, if there's if there's mistakes that happen in a job, it's usually because of change orders. Okay, if you have a policy for you know missing the agreed upon closing date, if you have any guarantee that the home will be done by a certain period of time, and if you miss that date, that there's some sort of a, a self-imposed penalty, talk about this. If you don't have anything like that, get rid of it. Same thing with this question number 19 as far as guarantees you offer. If you have a, a zero variance guarantee or, or a design satisfaction guarantee, uh, you know, guaranteed sales program for selling their home, any of that, you know, you would, you would put that in there. And then why should I choose your company? All of you went through this process. That's a unique selling proposition. Every single one of you have to be able to say at some point, we are the only builder in blank area that does this. So you all have to have a unique selling proposition. And I don't know if any of you have had, had that question asked of you before. But when you have a prospect looking at you point blank and says, Rick, tell me, why should I build with your company? I've had that happen to me. I don't know if you have. And it is not a comfortable situation if you don't have an answer. Because everyone's sort of thinking that, but very few people actually ask it. So you have to be able to, you know, right away know your unique selling proposition like the back of your, back of your hand. That is it. That is that is the ending of the the, the send ahead. Uh, questions and thoughts on uh, on that. Um, can you scroll down? Real I guess do I have this document somewhere? You will. Not yet. You will. He's going to send it to me. Okay, perfect. I, some of those uh, ideas were great, so I, I've been taking notes. I just want to make sure I get. Yep, I'm going to send you this in a Word document. All of you will be able to, to download this, and you make edits as you want, add your logos, put your links in there, and then just convert it from a Word document to a PDF, send it to Adriana. She will upload it into your Ubix uh, uh, link library, and then you can email this out to people with the attached link prior to the meeting. So this is the pre-event we're talking about. Very helpful tool here. Marty and Mike, you're using it, and I know you're, you're having some good success, too. The nice thing about this, too, is that now you'll be able to see, did the, did the prospect open the email, and did they click on the link? Because those that actually click on it and read it, you know are going to be stronger prospects than somebody that, that has not. Okay, any other thoughts or questions on the send-ahead? Hearing none? Um, I think we'll finish up today with this question. This is an example here of a survey that we would do for an event. So if you, don't, if you understand the event process, when you guys have an open house, we send out the invitations. When people RSVP, they get pulled out of the invite list and they get put onto the RSVP list. And then we send them reminder emails. And two of those reminder emails include a link to say, hey, I'm glad you're coming to the event. In order for me to be you know, best prepared for you, 
please tell me what you would like, you know, what information I should have ready. And then when they click on that link, they actually would go into, this is being an online survey, so it's going to be your website, you know, looking, looking just like this, with whatever questions that you see here. So, you know, um, I'd like information on floor plans, financing, I need, I, need, I need to sell my house, I'd rather build and buy, that sort of thing. My question to you is, and I'd like to get some feedback, is we could create something like this, and Runa, I might need your help here, or perhaps Darius, if this can be done dynamically, where we could have the person's name on there like we do for events. So if we had a pre-initial consultation survey, um, that the system could dynamically create a customized survey with the person's name on it. Maybe you can chime Darius, in. Do you want to handle that? I think the answer is yes. But um... What say you, Darius? Well, yes. If uh, depends on uh, from where the, the link, the survey is uh, displayed. If it's open from an email sent from Ubix, then yes, the answer is yes. Okay, it would be an email sent from Ubix, and then there would be a link on it. Okay. So I wanted to ask you guys if you think this would be helpful. Now, Runa, you have more experience with this than I do, but I believe the statistics that you use are thirty percent. Approximately 30% of them you sign uh, up. That, that is right. In a, in a training environment, uh, training clients uh, coming to a public uh, event, yes, about 30%. Okay. Marty says she likes it. Uh, I think, Rick, I think it would be a great idea to do that. Okay. Uh, one, one, one thought, uh, Rick, would be to couple this with an incentive that they, they submit this and they get something. The problem is you haven't met with them yet. So the incentive for the the incentive for the prospect would be Jed. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. The, the incentive to fill out the survey. Yeah, the incentive. So the incentive for the prospect would be that Jed. I'm going to go meet with Jed on Saturday. Jed's going to be better prepared for me because he's going to know exactly what's important to me. So we would go back to our three built-in hot buttons. We would go back to home site information, pricing information, and design. So, and those, mm -hmm. so we'd probably have four or five questions like this. It would be very short based around those three things. So uh, somebody would be able to tell you the designs they're looking for. We could even get into you know, if financing, if they've been pre-qualified there, if they want us to have lender information available, if they uh, uh, you know, we could ask them whatever whatever we want, but we'd probably keep it somewhat somewhat short, four or five questions. So what happened then, of course, is you would send out the send ahead. You would be able then to go back and check, and I think I have that here. So I go back into customer one on one, and I would go back into my emails sent, and I would see my sent date, and then I would see if they opened it, and then once it, if they opened it, I'd be able to check to see did they click on the link. And then I would also receive an email notification that, yes, they did take the survey, and here's how they answered it. So then you guys would know that, okay, I got, I mean, the more engaged they are prior to that meeting, the more likely they are going to keep moving forward. The less engaged they are, probably the higher the odds against you, the lower the percentage. So it would be just one way, to, again, to do another feeler to see where, where they're at. So... Uh, let's finish up. Star and Yvonne, um, would you let me know too what you think of that idea? Marty, thanks for your feedback. Um, Jed, Quinn, Nielsen, team, what are your thoughts on on doing something like this? I think it's a good idea personally. I think it would show, you know, definitely their interest a lot more, and it's just a better way. To, it's just an additional way to track them. I think I think it would be beneficial personally. Okay. Was that Quinn or was that somebody different? That's Quinn. Okay. How about how about salespeople? I think we could simply set it up where we would create a um, uh, a template that would have a link built into it. I'm not sure. Maybe Darius would tell me that's the best way to set it up. But we probably have some sort of a predefined email that would have the link for the send ahead in it, and then they would open up that. Um, that send ahead and um, there'd be the information we just talked about and then we would have a link also to the survey um, 
prior to it. Star says she likes it. Yvonne, any thoughts from uh, um, from you on this? I'm not sure if we'll get if we'll get an answer from Yvonne or not, but it sounds like the consensus is yes, we should do something like this. We're supposed to get how, how many people? Um, is it one per ten? Well, Star, I know Star, you would chime in on that. You th you think it's closer to maybe six or seven, one person for every six or seven people that that show up. The key thing is for the op you know when you do the open houses is closing for the appointment, and so you got to have enough people there to be able to talk to everybody and try to get the uh, appointment. So I would say probably six to ten. For every six to ten people there, you need one salesperson. And keep in mind, you will probably have a few no shows and a few people that will show up without RSVP. If they if they have an idea of where the house is, so well, you got. That's it. But then they'll be expecting somebody ready just for them to help them with the information. So we just have to make sure we've got the right people there. He's like, I know one of my clients might show up there, and then mm -hmm. that person can go overwhelm Kim or her or somebody else, you know, with thinking that all this is going to be presented to them. Yep. Yep, and and what what Jeremy from NIH, who's probably a master at these more than anyone else. What he will do is he will always have a limited amount of information there, but he will always have a not everything because he wants to create a reason to get an, an appointment. Yeah. yeah. So you would have just enough to whet their appetite, but not too much. Um, okay, so Star just, I think this is Star. Yeah, Star just said we had an open house. This past weekend, and six attended, and we really got to talk to all. I have been ha having ten, and that's too many. Um, of that six, we are seriously working on writing a contract with two. Yeah, so Star feels pretty strongly that ten is too many for one salesperson. And she's probably right. Uh, well, we, yeah, we would just need to be prepared based on who responded. And yep. Yeah. Yep. Well, I'm going to conclude the uh, the program for today. We will put this, uh, uh, Darius and, and Runa, we'll, we'll put this send ahead um, survey on our list, come up with a few questions. We'll solidify those with you, with you guys uh, before we launch it, and then we'll incorporate it right into um, uh, probably a template, like a, a pre-initial consult uh, email that you can send out. What I'll do... Rick, I have 